In this video, we want to talk about the process of statistics. Now, statistics is just another branch of mathematics, um, just like geometry or algebra, calculus, um, or trigonometry. And what we want to do in statistics, as you remember in our previous videos, um, is we want to learn how to work with data and how, and how you form conclusions from data. So in this video here, I want to talk to you about a five-step process for taking data and forming some type of conclusion from it. All right, so uh, the process of statistics that we're going to follow in this class is a five-step process that has the following steps to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk real briefly just about the steps, and then I'm going to take an actual statistical study and walk you through this statistical study and how we take raw data and form conclusions from it using these five steps. Okay, so the first thing you're going to have to do when you want to work with data is you want to ask a research question. Okay, so I have this data. What am I, what am I looking to conclude from this, this set of data? Okay, this is a research question here, or later what we'll call this is a hypothesis. hypothesis. Um, now, don't stress too much about this step in this course. What will happen is, is I will always come with the research question or hypothesis for you to test. Okay, so after we have this hypothesis or research question, the second thing we want to do is we want to design a study and collect data. Okay, um, We'll talk briefly about sampling methods uh, in a later video and how you collect data. Um, but for now, for this course, what will happen is, is I'll give you a research question and then I will give you the data for that question as well. Once you have now this raw data okay, in step number two, what you want to do in step number three is you want to take this data and you want to explore it. What you really want to do in step number three is you want to take this raw data and turn it into consumable information. So basically step three is about descriptive statistics. Now if you remember from our previous videos, a previous lecture, this is section one of the course. So we're going to take raw data and just, you know, a string of numbers, a string of data, and I want to consume it or turn it into consumable information. The next thing we're going to do, step four in our process, is we want to draw inferences and formulate conclusions from the data. So this right here is actually section five of our course. So if, if, if you're paying attention here, you're like, well, we start at section one, and then all of a sudden we go to section five of the course. Well, sections two, three, and four help us build to section five. So we need all five sections here. So we took our raw data, uh, we turned it into consumable information, and now once we have that consumable information, what is the data telling us? What conclusions can we make from that data? All right, the next and final step in our process of statistics is, is a reflection. So you want to look back on the conclusion you make, all right? You want to say, does, does this make sense, all right, this conclusion that I made? And are there any faults or any ways I can improve on the process? So let me give you uh, an example of a, a research question and an experiment here using these five steps, all right? And it's a little bit of a morbid example, a little bit macabre, um, but just go with it, okay? And this is about organ donation. And I, I came across this uh, statistic um, recently, and I found it incredibly interesting. So let me read it to you. So even though organ donations save lives, recruiting organ donors is difficult. Okay, so let's just pause right there. Um, first off, how does one become an organ donor in the United States? Well, um, I've been a resident of New York State and, and New Jersey. And in each instance, when I went to go get my driver's license, okay, so when you go to get your driver's license, there's a question about organ donation. Okay, now what's really interesting, and you'll see in this study, is how New York State and how New Jersey um, ask people to be organ donors is different, okay? So interestingly, surveys showed that about 95% of Americans approve of organ donation in principle, okay? So 95% of people say, yes, being an organ donor is a great thing. And many states offer a simple organ donation process when people apply for a driver's license, okay? Um, now, and I'll talk about this in a bit, how the simple process for registering to be an organ donor in New Jersey was different than how it was in New York, okay? So remember, 95% of people prove being an organ donor. However, it turns out only about 54%, so only a little bit more than half of licensed drivers in the United States are registered to be organ donors, which is crazy. There's such a disconnect right there, okay? 95% of people think it's a good thing, but only 54% of people sign up for it, okay? Why is this? Um, it's, think about what, what you have to think about to be an organ donor, okay? You have to think about your, 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 your death, 
Okay, so I, when I decided to be an organ donor myself, I had to say, well, if I were to die, and you know, thinking about my own mortality, um, what would I want to have with my organs? So uh, some people prefer not to make an active decision about this because obviously it's unpleasant to talk about or to think about. Okay, so here's the deal. Perhaps how people phrase or how the phrase, how organ donation is phrased to people, okay, could affect people's willingness to become an organ donor or how it's presented to them. Okay, so this is my hypothesis here. Okay, how it's being presented to people will affect their decision to be an organ donor. Okay, so let's find out if my hypothesis, now let me go back, my research question here, how it's presented, will influence people's willingness to be an organ donor. Okay, so this simple exercise will be our first look at how we solve problems in this course. So this question actually follows an actual study done out of Columbia University, and there's a link here if you're interested in reading the study. All right, so here's, here's how this study was conducted. Researchers at Columbia University said, okay, we want to test how people, how um, the organ donation process is presented to people um, on their driver's license application will affect their willingness to be an organ donor. So what they did was they recruited a bunch of Columbia University students. And what they said was, we want you to come be part of a research pro project. And they didn't tell them what the research project was. Okay, so they had, they put flyers out and then a bunch of students just showed up and said, yeah, I'll be part of this research study. So what they did was they took all the students and they put them into three different groups randomly. And I'll talk about the groups here. And what they had the students do is um, they had them fill out a driver's license application. Now they didn't tell them they were interested in organ donation. They just said, here's a driver's license application, fill it out. And it looked like any driver's license application you would fill out. It had all the normal questions on it. And buried deep within the the driver's license application, there was a question about um, organ donation. Okay, and um, the groups were the the three the three groups were given each different options for how it was presented to them. Okay, so the first group, which we'll call the neutral group, so some participants were forced to make a choice about becoming an organ donor or not without be giving a, without being given a default option. Okay, so this is actually how uh, New Jersey does it. So, for example, when I switched over to being a New Jersey resident and I was at the, the motor vehicle um, um, office uh, and I was talking to the individual doing my application, she said, OK, now there's going to be a question that's going to pop up on this computer screen and you have to answer it. And it was, would you like to be an organ donor? And I had to pick an answer. OK, there was no way I could opt out of it. I was forced to make a choice. OK, and I just chose, yes, I will be an organ donor. So other participants were told that the default option was not to be an organ donor. So the driver's license application said, hey, you're not an organ donor, but if you want, you can you could choose to become one. So this is what's called the opt-in group. This is actually how New York State does it. So New York State makes a decision for you. They say, look, our residents will not be organ donors, but if you want, you could choose to be an organ donor. OK, and that's called the opt-in. So the default option is no. So the other group, the final group, was uh, that they were told that the default option was, hey, you are going to be an organ donor, okay? But they could choose not to be an organ donor if they wish, so they could opt out. So basically, we have three different groups here, um, and they're trying to get at the same thing. We're trying to recruit people to be organ donors, but how it's presented to them, you must make a choice. You're not an organ donor, but you can opt in, or you are an organ donor, and you can opt out. How it's presented to them is different. Okay, so will these will the way it's presented make an impact? Okay, so let's go through our five steps here. Okay, one, what's our research question? Okay, does the default option presented to the driver's license application influence the likelihood driver's license applicants? Excuse me, influence the likelihood of someone becoming an organ donor? Okay, so here are our default options. Boom, do these influence people? Okay, the second step here. Design a study and collect data. Well, we did that, okay? We recruit various participants and we ask them to pretend to apply for a new driver's license and we randomly assign them to one of the three groups. Okay, the third step here, what you have to do is you have to take the data that you got and you have to explore it. You have to turn it into consumable information. And I'm gonna do this using what's called a cumulative frequency bar chart, okay? All right, so let's let me let's do steps three and four. Step four is we look at the results and uh, 
you know, what conclusions can we make? All right, and so let's look at the, the, the chart and make a conclusion from it um, all at the same time here. So this is what the study showed, okay? Here you see the three groups, the opt-in, okay, so this is how New York State does it, okay, that you are default no, but you can opt into being a donor. This is the opt-out, okay, so you, look, you already are a donor, but you can opt-out. And then this is the neutral group where you have to make a decision. Down here, you see the proportion of people who choose to be um, organ donors. So like in New York State, what we're seeing here is, is it's saying uh, if we do it the New York State way, only roughly 41, 42% of people will be organ donors, which is, which is actually a little bit higher than what it is in New York State actually. And then look, the opt-out or the neutral, they're both, they're both close to 80%. So it looks like these two options are, are more, almost more than double this, this presentation way or the way that New York State presents it, okay? So what is our conclusion? Okay, so we got to answer our research question now. Does the default option presented to driver's license applicants influence the likelihood of someone becoming an organ donor? Well, here were the three options. Okay, looking at our data, are, is there a difference among the groups? Absolutely there is. It looks like these two are much better ways to present data than this one right here. So our conclusion, absolutely how it's presented does affect people's decisions. Okay, so that's great. We've solved the problem of, of recruiting more organ donors. We should just change uh, the, the, how it's presented in the real world or how, how it's presented on driver's license applications in the real world. All right, well, now here's the part where you have to look back. What are the major faults of this study? Okay, and there's actually two major faults of this study. So the first one, it has to do with the people it recruited. Okay, so when you think about who got recruited to this study, it's Columbia University students. So what we're saying here is this data or our conclusions really only tell us something about how the likelihood of Columbia University students will be influenced by the default option. So not the, gen not the population as a whole, but really only Columbia students. And maybe there's something different about Columbia students than the rest of the world. So we can't really extrapolate our conclusions um, about Columbia students to the rest of the general population. Um, and, then, and then there's actually a, a little bit of um, bias in the results here, okay? So part of the problem with this is um, students are just told to, um, to just, just pretend that they're going to um, uh, apply for a driver's license. And, and what you're gonna notice here is, is that students, if they choose to be an organ donor or not in this fake example here, it will have no impact on the real world. So the bias that you're gonna see here is students are gonna be likely to tell researchers the result they think they want them to hear. So what's gonna happen is, is a student's gonna go through this um, driver's license application, and they're gonna to get to the organ donor one, and they're gonna say, well, wait a second, uh, someone is gonna judge me, someone's gonna read this. I want them to think I'm a good person. So I'm gonna click, yes, I wanna be an organ donor. Okay, because I want the person reading my, my driver's license application to say, Matt was a good person. Okay, but in reality, I might not want to be an organ donor. And the reason I can do that is because this, this little survey has no, no uh, effect on my uh, willingness to be an organ donor in the real world. So while this study did provide some interesting results, uh, you got to be careful what conclusions you make to the general population. And you have to look back and say, well, what can we really, really extrapolate from this study? All right, so I, I think this was an interesting example. And I want you to, to keep that in mind as you go through um, in the real world or in your future careers or future studies and you see um, studies and what people conclude, conclude from them. Dig into the data, say, okay, well, what, what really is going on here? What can we really conclude? And, and is it correct to extrapolate the conclusions to the general population as a whole?